be making bases. What's good, YouTube? It's your man, Beat Maker Basis. We're back again with another dope video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, like, and comment on the video. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into today's topic. What we're gonna be talking about is some tips and tricks that you can use to mix your beats using stock plugins in Logic Pro 10. Now, we've been using this beat um, in the last couple of videos, and we're gonna be using it for this example as well. I'm gonna give you just a little preview of the beat, and then I'm gonna be showing you what you could do to make your beat sound saucy with the mix. All right, let's check it out. Cool. So that was the intro and that's the hook of the beat. I'm not going to play it all the way through. What I'm going to be showing you is a super simple way to mix your beats. Now, what you want to do is actually go to the hook part of the beat because that's pretty much going to have all your sounds uh, that's going to be playing the beat for the most part there. And that's where we're going to start mixing. Um, a, the first tip I would say is to, when, when you're making the beat, is to go ahead and get your levels going in. As you can see, like when I was making the beat, I was kind of going through here and, and leveling things anyway, but um, you can still do it from scratch. So we'll go ahead and go to the mixer window. And what I'll do here is we're gonna work on the drums first. So I'm gonna take out all of these different um, instrument sounds. We'll just do the drums and the, um, excuse me, the drums and the, uh, and the bass. So I'll just take out everything except for the bass and the kick, and let's just make sure the those sound right together first. Cool. So it sounds pretty dope. Um, basically, you want that kick to be punching through the mix. You can do certain things um, like uh, with the compression, you do uh, different compression techniques, but I don't think it really needs it. I'm of the school of thought of, you know, less is more. So only add to it when you need it. Another tip here is picking the right sound. So we already did that. If you watched a couple of the videos when it comes to making the beats and everything, you will see how we did the sound selection. But basically um get the levels right first so we got that then i'm gonna bring in the clap or actually it looks like we brought everything in i'm bringing this clap in all right bet so after you do that let's bring in a hi-hat and you want to be able to hear the hi-hat but you don't want it to be so loud that it's overtaking everything and we'll bring the, the um, symbol in. We'll take that down a little bit. Now what we want to do is go ahead and focus on the actual instrument sound. So we'll bring those in, make sure the levels are right on that. Um, bring this other bell synth. So basically get the levels right. Um, like I said, make sure the, the kick is punching through, make sure the clap is punching through, make sure that eight, the bass or 808 sounds good together, and then just mess with the levels on, on the melody and then the percussion. Make sure the percussion is not overshadowing everything else. Make sure the melody is not overshadowing everything else. Really, the percussion and the melody should be like right below the kick, the, kick, the snare, or the clap, and the, and the bass or the 808. From there, the next thing you want to do is start um, doing something called subtractive EQing. Okay, subtractive EQing is where we're going to go to certain sounds that could be conflicting with others. So, for instance, this 808 or not 808, this bass sound, you want this to be able to be heard 
um, very well in the actual mix. So what we want to do is take out the lows of all of the other instruments um, so that the bass could sound, you know, good and bassy. So what I'll do here is we'll start with this bass bell synth. I'll start taking out some of the lows on that. Then we'll go to this lead, then the synth, and then we'll take out some on the percussion. So let's go from there. quick tip is you just click right here at the top where it says EQ is going to pull up a stock EQ that you can use. One tip here is you don't want to take out too much of the lows. You want to leave in enough to where you can still hear the fullness of the sound. So we'll take out some of those lows so you can still hear, yeah. Cool. So after you get the um, levels and after you do the EQing, next thing I would do is go ahead and do like some panning. Just so everything's not going through the middle of the of the, of the mix. You want everything to be stereo, um, make the stereo sound sound good. So um, I'll just go to some of the uh, melody parts and just pan them to the left or the right just a, just a little bit and we'll see how it sounds from there. After you have everything panned, you have the EQ and everything like that, you can do certain things to make um, certain things pop out in the mix to, to um, using compression. Honestly, I don't think we need to do that, but I'll show you how to do that. So let's say if we wanted to make this clap sound louder, I'm going to turn it down just so you can hear what we could do with compression. Okay, so cool, we can't hear the, the clap that well. So what I'll do is I'll come over here to this basic dynamic option here, go to compre uh, compressor, press stereo. And then what you wanna do is you wanna play around with the threshold, um, the ratio and the attack to make sure that it, the clap sounds louder. So I'll just kind of show you what to do here. So I'm gonna go ahead, push play, and we'll go from there. I'll just do a before and after. I'll let you kind of hear the clap before and after. This is before. And this is after. And 
has a little bit more of a punch. And basically what you can see here is we have ratio, which is going to control like um, how much of the signal is going through. The threshold is going to say at what point, you know what I'm saying, the compressor is going to actually start compressing. So like when I turn this down, this is going to basically give you a harder compress sandwich. It's kind of like think about like a, um, a Subway sandwich. If the more that you push the meat and stuff together, the thinner the, or the thicker the sandwich is going to be and the more compact it's going to be. Vice versa, the, the, you know, if you do the opposite, you know what I mean, it will, it will do what it's supposed to do. But um, yeah, you want to play with the, the threshold, the um, ratio. Basically, if you push the ratio up and then push the threshold down, it's going to really help out with making the clap or whatever instrument you want it to sound more punchier, punchier. And then you can also turn the attack down. So that's just in a nutshell. I don't want to get too de deep into what a compressor is in this video. But I can do it, you know, in another video. But yeah, higher uh, a higher uh, ratio, a lower threshold, and a lower attack is going to make a punchier sound. And then from there, you could pretty much just pick these different compressors, and it will just give it a different sound as well. So I like that one. Let's listen to it with the actual tracks. All right, bet. So the mix sounds pretty dope as it is. If you did want to do some, some little stuff to make it spicy, you could add some reverb on certain things, but for this particular beat, I wouldn't recommend it. Now, the only other sauce I'm gonna give you on this is actually go ahead and go to the stereo and just turn this down to like negative four dB, or excuse me, negative 4.6 dB. What that's gonna do is it's gonna keep it from doing too much peaking, okay? But still give you an overall vibe on the music. As you can see, if I can, for instance, I go ahead and push option and click on that, it's gonna take it back up. And you're gonna see how much is peaking right there. So let's just kind of listen here. Let's see. All right, so after that, you pretty much have your mix ready to go. Um, what I would do is I would just bounce this down to a uh, wave file, and we'll do that real quick. Make sure you click on PCM. I'll go ahead and do uh, 48 instead of the 41. Normalize off and push OK. And then you can just give it a name put it to the desktop and I always say like rough after it so I know what the, which version this is and bounce it down. Then I'm going to show you a stock plugin that you can put on here to bring the levels back up and make it sound, you know, industry ready and all of that type of stuff. So bounce that down and we're going to open up a new project and I'm going to show you something on that. All right, so we'll save that. I'm going to close this out. We're going to open up a new session. We're going to do an audio track. And then I'm just going to come over here to my desktop. And we're going to find the beat. Uh, where is that beat called? It's called Eerie. Cool. And just drag it into the session like so. I'm going to get rid of this. Change project. You can do that. Import the uh, tempo, you can do that, all right? And just bring it to the very beginning. And now we have our beat. So we'll listen to the beat right here, make sure everything sounds right. Now, as you know, as you can notice here on the stereo out, there's no more, there's not a whole lot of clipping at all. And that's what you want. That's why I turned it down to the negative four dB on the stereo output. Now what we want to do though, is we'll go to the stereo output though. And we're going to add something called the adaptive limiter. What that adaptive limiter is going to do is just basically boost that signal back up and um, make it sound industry ready. So I'm going to go ahead and go where it says output or out ceiling, click on true peak detection. And what we're going to do is turn this down to negative 0.1 dB. All right, let's listen to it. Now. 
And you can play around with the gain, but I usually just leave it right here at, at um, 3 dB. You can put it at 2 dB if you want. And you can even kind of bring it up even more, say if the beat's real soft. And you basically want to pull the gain up or down until it starts feeling like it's about to be start clipping. Um, in a nutshell, that's it. I'll just turn this off just so you can hear the difference. That's without it. This is with it. Just a slight difference. It punches it more in your face with this plugin on there. Again, this is all with stock plugins and everything like that. At this point, now your beat's ready to, you know, go out to artists and everything like that. So pretty much that's the, the video. Appreciate y'all watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll holler at y'all next week.